This is RTV News. I'm Isabel Masoza, at top of our edition. As we begin, let us inform you that on Sunday afternoon at Viraj Urubwiro, President Paul Kagame received the president of Guinea-Bissau. The two leaders discussed ways to further strengthen bilateral ties between Rwanda and Guinea-Bissau and also spoke on the security situation in the region. The West African leader met with President Paul Kagame after visiting the DRC. Moving on, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, has urged Rwandans, especially leaders, to pay attention to the choices they make today because they determine the future of the country. The President of Rwanda reiterated this on Saturday at the closing ceremony of the 15th Assembly of the Unity Club. Olive Untete with more. It is a forum that takes place at a time when Rwanda is proud of the progress made in building and strengthening the unity and resilience of Rwandans. President Paul Kagame points out that the Unity Club is a mirror of the Rwandan society. There is what identifies an individual, what identifies a family, and there is also what identifies the country. All of that is related. Therefore, Unity Club is an organization that characterizes the country. It has expanded from one person. It is no longer an organization of one person. It is an organization of the citizens, especially in terms of mindset, perception, and social life, which gives direction and guides much in our country. Nature and culture is the foundation of families and the foundation of countries. However, President Kagame points out that what has been achieved required exceptional decisions through difficult circumstances. On this note, he gave various examples, including where in the previous government that started after the genocide against the Tutsi, some of the leaders conspired to sow division among RPF Imotani members and all politicians through a political party under the name of Runar. <laughs> The cabinet got so excited that we were indebted to Runar, that there are some of their possessions that we had to give them, but the plan was to create confusion in the cabinet. There were people who used to say, will we be able to handle this RPF? The only thing that we can do to destroy it is to sow divisions among them. That was the plan. And then I said, how can you be cynical? This journey of moving forward from this bad history and to develop, you are just making us backslide all these years and made us go back to its policy. Should we sit, listen and follow what, what you are proposing to us? I can never allow to put the waste, the blood that was shed. We have not yet even buried those who were killed during the bad history. We don't even know who they are. Even those who were fighting lost their lives, and then we who luckily survived. We are just going to sit and let you send the country into a disarray. Then I said, if you want another war, we are going to fight it. You cannot do that. I used to tell them that. I was the vice president at that time, and I was also leading the army. I was supposed to be quiet. It seems like I didn't respect the advice or didn't respect my senior at that time. But because of the life, the life of all who are still alive, and because of the evil needed to be undone, we didn't have any other choice. President Paul Kagame noted that real choices made at the right time are important to an individual, to the family, and to the country as a whole. It means that every time people have choices, every time Every year, every three and a half years of ten years of your life, we experience various tough things that shake us and make us think, how can I face it? And how can I overcome it? And how can I do something that can be beneficial to me, to the family, and to others? It is a life of making choices. We always have to make choices. That is what I always tell people. The good way of making choices is not to wait until someone tells you to do something or someone to ask you 
you have to ask yourself. You speak to yourself. You make a dialogue with yourself always. You always measure yourself the same way someone measures his temperature, how he feels, and test his heart condition. And when testing yourself, that's when you get to know the truth. During the 15th annual forum of the Unity Club in Huararumuri, eight exemplary decisions were made and will be reviewed so that the program of Numinar Rwanda can continue to be the basis of the Rwandan identity. The Unity Club in Huararumuri was founded by Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame and is made up of members of the government, former members and their spouses. Olive Nete, RTV News. Lots of tech homes there for self-improvement. Thank you, Olive. Moving on, various people have expressed that living in a country where leaders work together towards the nation's goals gives them hope for a bright future for Rwanda. Adam Squizera. It has been 28 years since the establishment of the government of national unity. It's a government that brought together various people with different interests, and some of them didn't have the same vision as others. Honorable Mukama Abbas, the deputy ombudsman in charge of preventing and fighting corruption. At that time, he was a member of the Democratic Party, PDI, which was presented by two members in parliament, but was not in the government. He was also invited in discussions held at the village Rugiro in 1997 and 1998. They used to lie us that we are together in the drive towards development. And they also lied to themselves, thinking that they were deceiving the RPF, ignoring how much effort the RPF had put into the initiative, and also the knowledge God gave them. But all this was to block RPF's program of bringing together all Rwandans to build the nation, and that was the main goal towards the insurgents. You even had them in Changugu, where their prefect was working with those insurgents. <laughs> At that time, the hearts and minds of the people did not believe that the government of national unity was going to deliver them. That changed over the years. When I look back, I see that the country has really changed. I remember a country that started from nothing, since you know that in 1994, there were only corpses, destroyed houses, everyone was afraid. But today we are free, everyone is safe. Children are studying since you know that there has been a long time where children were not allowed to study. But now everyone who is committed has an opportunity to study. Life was at a very low level. Not all of us had opportunity to study. But most of us, including me, we even completed university and got jobs. Everyone improved their economy and the country improved its people as well. In the closing ceremony of the 15th Forum of the Unity Club in Mwadarumuri, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, who served as Vice President and the Minister of Defense at that time, reminded the audience the challenges they went through to get the country to where it is now. Even after that, there were many things that happened. If they remember, I spent days and nights crossing the entire country, and that time I was coming from Chibuye in 1996. Then he started saying that RPF soldiers, Kagame soldiers, were massacring people. At first, I thought I had misunderstood him, but more started joining the ruckus. So, I asked him like five times, Seth, what are you talking about? Do I look like a murder to you? After all those days, I have spent in your home area, not eating and sleeping. Do you think I went there to kill people? That's all in the past. At that time, there was no reason to oppression about what they might do. But now, there is nothing to be afraid of. On July 19, 1994, the RPF in Otani made the decision to share power by forming government of national unity comprised of five parties that had not involved themselves in the atrocities of the genocide against Tutsi. Adam Squizera, RTV News.
Thank you, Adams. In more news, residents across the country say that they were assured that they'll be placed in the new uh, categories of the National Social Protection Policy known as Wudehe. But they have been waiting for two years for that to happen. However, now there's confidence that that will be so now that the categories have been um, approved by the cabinet, they will soon be announced have expressed grievances over the 2015 categories which they say were not done accurately because they did not involve citizen participation. I was placed in the second category which made me happy and I am content. The thing I criticized was that they put me in third class and I wasn't happy with it. Even when I complained, they kept me in it. Like a person who has a car, who is in the second class. I don't even have a bike. I'm in the third. Isn't obvious. That is not fair. Some of the local government officials explain that there are those who have been asking for their categories to be changed so as to assess the difference in terms of health care benefits. We give the person another form to fill and take it to the local councils. Whatever they decide, we respect and change accordingly. In 2021, new Obudehe categories marked by the letters A, B, C, D and E were created in a bid to correct the mistakes that were made in the first place. And local residents across the country are still waiting for the new categories to be implemented. They told us that new categories will come out in six months, but it has been two years now. The thing that worries us is that there is those who belong to the categories that need help and others who should budget accordingly to the category they belong. But that's not possible because the categories may come out when they are in different group. How can you accept what you don't know? We will accept the categories when we see them. Asumpta Ngabire, the Minister of State in charge of social affairs at the Ministry of Local Government, says the new categories are unique compared to the old ones. The categories had become almost like an identity card for some people, and it was evident even when the President of the Republic of Rwanda visited different areas, with people introducing themselves to him, leading with the Obudehe category they belong to, as if they were supposed to receive assistance and not try to do anything for themselves. The new categories will get rid of that mentality and people will be classified knowing that they are not to remain in that state of neediness indefinitely and instead will be expected to work their way up and become self-reliant. Officials monitoring the categories say they have been waiting upon the cabinet to approve them before officially announcing the names of the people in them and the fact that they were approved during the cabinet meeting on the 11th of November 2022 gives hope that they are about to be released. Now, parents have cautioned the youth to avoid consuming alcohol, saying that it is one of the things that can hinder the development of the country and affect their future. The President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, has urged those with law enforcement to put in a lot of effort in fighting all evils, including alcoholism. Adam Squizera has more. Certain parents claim to have observed some youth consuming excessive amounts of alcoholic drinks. Why they advise them to reduce it or stop it completely is that not affect the country's development. I want to tell the youth that this country wasn't built by alcohol. It was built by resistance and being accountable. Some youth, including Hatizima and Michelle, say that drinking too much alcohol is a wastage of resources. For me, I drink little, only three bottles of Mutsing. Since when I drink, I waste money and I'm not able to work the following day. On the other side, the alcohol vendors, they post that there are people who are vodazing. We are among of bar clients. 
includes minors. Children used to come here, but we never gave them alcohol since it's prohibited. Psychologists note that alcohol addiction and drunkenness among the youth is often driven by peers or thinking that drinking helps them to forget their problems. As Dr. Rukundo Arthur explains the effects of drinking excessive alcohol. When a person drinks excessive alcohol, he's destroying his liver. Another thing, people who drink much alcohol may develop a brain damage disease. So we ask that person who is at that level of drinking much that he should take that decision earlier before the consequences. In the 15th forum of the Unity Club in Muaranumori, the participant requested that the age of those legally allowed to drink alcohol be raised from 18 to 21 years, which would help to mitigate bad behaviors. In foreign countries, they have age restriction at nightclubs and bars. You find the people at the entrance asking for identity cards, sometimes even stopping adults who look like minors so that there is no confusion. There is enforcement of the law and anyone caught allowing minors into places they should not be is held accountable. The establishment may be closed for following such a thing to happen. Otherwise, waiting for people to respect the law without enforcing it is a waste of time. It never works out. So you must put laws in place, but you must also do a follow-up. Mental health experts also advise adults to drink only in moderation and for the alcoholics to seek professional help. Adam Squizira, RTV News. That's my time with you, Fox. It's always a pleasure bringing you the latest here in Rwanda and beyond. On behalf of the entire news team here at RBA, thanks for watching.